Hello? Oh. Hello, everybody. Um, just want to take a moment to go through the uh, preparation for the final exam and a, a few other things. Uh, first, with the final exam, if you have not done this already, please click this link. Um, there are um, a total of one, two, three, four, five lectures to go through. If you begin it now, um, completely reasonable. If you begin, if you wait until a couple of days before the final exam expires, not reasonable whatsoever. The final exam will be available probably, actually probably today. Um, so you can prepare for it and begin it when you're ready. Um, but the, the key is you have to prepare now for it. Um, one thing to keep in mind is the lockdown browser. Um, if you're not familiar with this, you just click this link here. Um, if you have a Windows, obviously you click here. If you have a Mac, you click here. And what the lockdown browser is, is it's, it's a browser just like Internet Explorer or Mozilla or Chrome, um, but it only allows your um, computer to open up one browser, the browser that you're in. So once uh, the lockdown browser is downloaded to your computer, it should download to the desktop. And it'll look like a little padlock key. Um, um, and then you open it up, and it takes you straight to the login page for um, Blackboard. And then you can take the uh, final exam from there, just going into the class. Um, so if you haven't uh, downloaded this yet, do so now. Don't wait until right before the final because uh, probably something might go wrong, right? So if something does go wrong, then um, call 872-2598, which is the phone number for distance education, and they can help you out with that. Um, but if you wait till the last minute, um, they might not be able to help you out with that, right? So um, in, um, in all reality, though, if you have... Um, any means at all of getting to the campus, one of our campuses at Star, Westlaco, um, or in McAllen, uh, I would highly recommend taking the exam at one of our um, one of our computer labs because if something goes wrong, uh, there are, there are people right there that can help you out. And if there's something wrong with the computer you're on you can stand up and move to another computer quite easily than you could at home. So if at all possible, use the computers at the computer lab. Uh, I know that's not possible for everybody, so if not, um, just make sure the lockdown browser works ahead of time. Test it out. Make sure you can open up the, the, uh, the test and all of that kind of stuff. So download this now um, and uh, put it onto your computer. Um, the lectures. So, what are these lectures? How do you succeed on them? That's just a few of the things I want to go over real quick today. Uh, let's just start with social Darwinism. I shortened this uh, essay, so make sure you, if you've already looked at this, uh, it's good news for you. Um, I took a few of the components off just because I think I lost some of the video on it. Um, social Darwinism. So the overarching essay question is discuss um, the philosophy of social Darwinism and compare the philosophies of Herbert Spencer and William Graham Sumner. So you click the link here, open it up, and it'll take you to the YouTube feed for it. Um, and uh, view the, uh, the lecture. Um, basically, let me explain what, what these are down here. Well, these are uh, concepts that uh, specify this, um, go in more specificity of this overarching essay prompt here, right? So you want to go through all three of these links here. You also want to go take a look at this. This will help you out. It's kind of interesting just to see how the 14th Amendment uh, is used in law and, and giving corporations um, what's, what's called personhood. <laughs> um, but um, you want to go through all of these. And what I suggest doing, this is how you'll succeed, is first handwrite this essay prompt out. Handwrite it out. And then, underneath, handwrite th these uh, prompts for each concept um, relating to this overarching essay question. Actually, handwrite them out. Um, and this will give you a little bit more cognitive of what's going on, what to expect. And then, when you're watching the lectures, when you're watching me give these lectures on social Darwinism, um, when you come across information that helps you respond to those prompts, you write it down. 
right? And through these um, three concepts, you'll probably have a page, maybe two pages of notes by the end of it, right? Um, and what you want to do immediately is write a five to eight paragraph essay, why right? it's fresh in your brain. And then once you're done with that, then you move on to the, the net, another lecture. And then maybe a, a day or so later, come back to it and see if you can write out five um, paragraphs, eight paragraphs, without with um, using your notes as little as possible. Um, if you have to use your notes, that's fine. But if you need, it, it, um, see if you can do it without using your notes. This is why it pays to start preparing now. If you wait until a day or two before the um, final exam expires, you won't uh, have time to prepare. You, you, it'll, you, will, you will probably fail the uh, final exam. So if you want to succeed, prepare now. If you want to fail, then wait until about two days before the um, final exam expires. And then you could fail, right? But I'm pretty sure everyone wants, wants to succeed. So start now, and you won't fail. Um, so that's the social Darwinism one. They all work uh, the same way, but let's take a look at it real quick. Uh, unit 7, we're going to look at the progressive era. In depth, this one's a little bit more uh, content um, enriched uh, the, compared to uh, the one before, so you really want to have time for it. These lectures are a little bit longer, so you want to have some time to prepare for that. This one will probably constitute up to an 8 to 12 paragraph essay. Um, the uh, next one is the New Deal. Works the same way. Has the concepts. You click the concepts, watch the lecture, and there you go. Right? So for this, you'll want to uh, click the required background, the New Deal, Concept 1, Concept 2, Concept 3. Take notes. Take notes. It's key. As soon as you're done taking notes, write yourself a five to eight paragraph essay. Um, and you'll be able to succeed on this. And then you want to go back and practice, right? So writing essays is like doing anything else, right? If you practice, it becomes quite easy. If you don't practice, then it's very difficult. So make sure that you give yourself time and space to practice. Um, let's see. And last two, I won't click them, but they're right there, World War II and the Cold War. Uh, again, uh, there's the Lockdown Browser software that you need to download, so make sure you do that um, before anything. Do that now. Um, all right, so um, course content. Uh, there's one more quiz left, quiz four. It expires December 7th, but I highly, highly suggest getting it done way sooner than that, right? So if you can get it done by December 1st, uh, this Saturday, do so. Uh, if you wait and put this stuff off, you're, you're going to um, not have, have as much time to prepare for the final exam. It's a six-week course. You signed up for it, not me. Right? You signed up for it. And so the key to success um, is to prepare early. And I can tell. I can tell the people who get this, the, the quizzes done earlier. They're not, they're not getting it done earlier to rush through it, but they've done the reading and they got done sooner than it was two, three days before, maybe even four days before the um, quiz expired. I actually have a student who, who successfully completed quiz four already and earned a 90%. And what that tells me is that student has read, taken notes, gone through the quizzes they already submitted and seen the answers and made themselves a little um, answer key, did everything they need to do. And I bet that student right now um, is working on their essays. Right? So make sure uh, you get the next quiz, quiz four, uh, this quiz right here, done as, as quickly as possible. Right? Ultimately, you have till December 7th, but the people that await till December 7th, uh, I can almost guarantee that they will have um, a pretty hard time with the final exam because they, they, it's, it's an indication, not necessarily, but it's an indication that uh, they're not getting done ahead of time so they can begin working on the um, five lectures and essays for the final exam. Um, let me just remind you of the late policy. I had a couple of students emailing me, uh, telling you about uh, funerals and people being sick and uh, um, dogs dying and uh, their brain falling out of their ears and all sorts of nasty 
gross, disgusting things happening in their lives. These things happen, right? They, they happen. You have to anticipate them happening. So waiting until a day, even a day before the expiration date is at your own risk, right? So don't wait. It's an open-ended course. You can, you can do things at your own pace. My suggestion has always been up your pace a little bit more. Um, so in case something goes wrong, somebody dies, you get sick, the car breaks down, some, you won't have to worry about it as much as far as regarding this class because you have worked ahead, right? Six-week course, there's not a lot, a lot of wiggle room for putting things off and, and going back to do things again. You can't go back and do things again uh, in this course. So make sure you understand the late policy in this class. Nothing, nothing can be submitted late. Now, if it's just one thing that you submitted late, and at the end of the semester, uh, not submitted late, but just didn't do it, so you missed the expiration, so there is no way of going back. But if, if, if you missed a quiz, one quiz, and you end up getting a 80% or higher on the final exam, and your over, our overall grade at the end of the semester is, let's say, a 78%. Right, but you got an 89 on the final exam, and you got a 79 percent because you missed quiz two. I'll I'll give you the benefit of the doubt that something went wrong. You didn't anticipate that going wrong, but it did, right? And so I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and give you the couple of more percentage points to to allow you to earn a B, which you probably would have earned the B if you got in quiz two um, completed when it was supposed to, right? So. If you did miss one quiz, and one quiz only, uh, don't worry about it. If you've missed more than one quiz, you, I, I don't know if you're going to be able to succeed in this course. Um, those are the, those um, amount to 15% of the grade each quiz, um, so you, you've lost 30% of your grade right there. right? And so there won't, really won't be any wiggle room to give you the benefit of the doubt. Right, but that, that's what I can do for you if you happen to miss. I know things happen, and you, 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 despite your best intentions, you, you wish it didn't happen, but yeah, you missed one quiz. Again, if you're a few percentage points, three, um, three to two, maybe even four percentage points away from a B or an A, and you got a B or higher on your final exam, an 80% or higher on your final exam, I will give you the benefit of the doubt. And, and up your grade to uh, the level you probably would have earned if you had taken the quiz in the first place. Um, that's it for now. Um, like I said, prepare for the final exam and you have all nothing to worry about. In a couple of weeks, uh, your U.S. History 2 requirement will be done. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions or concerns. I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.